Alright kids, this is Red, and this is the second part of my tutorial on tank turrets. Now, what we're going to look at is the conventional armor layout for a tank turret. And we're going to look at a few basic ground rules which I'm going to establish now. First is that the area of the turret most is almost definitely going to be the front of the turret. So, this is where you should concentrate your armor. The second rule is that any part of the hull which is always covered by the turret at any angle of its traverse does not need to have its roof armored, nor does the bottom of the turret have to be armored in that spot. The third is that all areas of the turret must be armored against at least shell fragments and machine guns, but you should always keep in mind the expected angles since the turret will normally be facing forward. First thing I'm going to look at armor which is sometimes attached to the barrel of a gun on some vehicles is known as the mantlet. The mantlet is usually facing directly at the enemy. This is because your gun is normally facing directly at the enemy. This is where you aim, this is where your gun will go, and keep that in mind when you're designing the ballistic shape of the mantlet. So you can effectively optimize it for both its slope in the vertical and in the lateral ranges. The second part of the turret is the face of the turret, the front area of the turret. This is also can be optimized for slope, although it is more optimized for its lateral slope than its vertical slope. This is because while a tank can be in front of you, your turret is still usually going to be facing directly at it. So allowing a small degree of error, you really can expect your turret be facing forward at all times, and therefore, for the angle that this presents to your enemy, and the effect of the slope, which is inferred by this, to be relatively stable, common, and unchanging. Therefore, the front of your turret should be well angled if you want to optimize its ballistic shape, and it should be thick, because this is the area where you will be taking the most fire. However, the sides and top of the vehicle, as well as the rear of this, of this whole turret assembly, have to be armored as well. Usually the sides, my rule is one-fourth, so allowing 15 degrees, give or take, to allow for turret rotation and possible surprises, etc., of the thickness required to stop an enemy round fired from a main gun from any expected opponent. And if you can get more than this thickness, that's always a good thing. But you should at least be protected against machine gun, fragment, glancing shell fire, etc. The same goes for your top. You want to have enough thickness to withstand when you're, you know, coming down off of a slope, off of a ledge or such. And you also want to be able to withstand, if possible, although a secondary consideration, fire from aircraft and long-range, high-angle, parabolic fire from artillery, if possible. But this is also, again, a secondary requirement. The rear of the turret should be protected against machine gun fire. Same with the bottom of the turret. The bottom of the turret can actually be made thinner if it overlaps and it's a part of the turret which is not expected to take direct fire, such as, for instance, the bottom of the turret bustle should still be armored against shell fragments because high explosive when you're aiming sideways can detonate underneath you and it just generally improves the overall safety of the vehicle. So to synopsize, thickest armor goes to the front, angled facing forward. You can add a mantlet for a little extra protection along the center of the front. And this mantlet will usually be angled laterally and vertically towards the opponent, whereas the sides and the rest of the turret will only be angled laterally. The exception to all these rules, of course, is the oscillating turret, which you can treat the entire turret like a mantlet. Alright, this is Red. I hope you found this informative. If you do find it informative, feel free to give praise to me, say thank you. And if you did not find it informative, I'll fuck you.